What's up everyone, this is John with Skate Better and today we are doing the Polar Deck Review. I've been skating this deck for a few months now. It's definitely time to do a review. I put in some good work. First thing I wanna talk about is why Polar? So why did I choose this deck? I kinda of mentioned this in the setup video, but basically I just really like the way they look and I like the team and I wanted to give it a shot. And I feel like a lot of the riders are trending right now. But I mean just like growing in general popularity. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Let's talk about the measurements of this deck. So this deck is 8.375 wide. It is 32 inches long and it has a wheelbase of 14 and a half. So pretty average size deck. Next thing I wanna talk about is the concave and the pitch of this deck. This is a really big one and I've been using other decks so you all can kinda of get an idea of what it's gonna be like compared to some other common deck shapes and sizes. So first thing I wanna show you is compared to the Plan B deck that I used to be skating. This is a very flat deck this way, so not a lot of concave. It does have a medium amount of pitch. It's more chill in the tail than it is in the nose. And if I put these on top of each other, you can see, and I kind of did this in the last video too, that the pitch is somewhat similar. It's a little bit more of a pitch in the tail on the Polar than the Plan B, but it definitely has a little bit more concave. And you can see that, especially back here, there's like a little space. Yeah, so there's like that little space right there where you can clearly see the difference in the concave. And that did mean something, which I'll explain a little bit later. So just some other deck shapes to compare. This is a real deck. So you can kind of see how that uh, stacks up. Very, very similar to the real in concave, I would say. But then once again, the pitch is still a little bit more on the polar for the tail. This would be a primitive deck. So as you can see, there's a slight difference in the wheelbase. I believe the primitive has a slightly smaller wheelbase or shorter wheelbase, which is why it looks like it's further in. But similar shape, I think the, the primitive has a very similar concave, maybe the tiniest bit less than the polar, but a little bit more pitch in the nose and the tail. And then the last thing I'm gonna compare it to is the hockey, because this has the most uh, steepest concave, or steepest pitch out of any deck that I've skated. So I would say concave, somewhat similar, and once again, the pitch of uh, the Polar would definitely be less than the hockey, both in the tail and in the nose, so. And once again, I just wanted to do that so you can get an idea of kind of what it looks like compared to other maybe common shapes or deck brands. So for me, the concave, it felt pretty average. I would say it was slightly higher than average concave. So scale of one to 10, I would put it at like a seven. And as you saw with some of the other decks that I skated, that's probably pretty similar to what I rated those in the past. As far as the pitch goes, man, it's really weird because this deck does have a good pitch. What happened with this deck, and this is the biggest thing, I'm just gonna get right into it, is I don't know if y'all can see this, but this part here, like it goes up the concave and then it dips down a little bit. And because it dips down so much here, even though this has a reasonable angle of the tail and the nose, it, it doesn't yield a very high pop. It's like, this is a really good example. Like if you take the Plan B deck, right? It's pretty much straight across here. And then even though it's really mellow, it still goes directly up almost from the exact spot to where it dips down from. And the difference is because this deck kind of dips down a little bit more here, it almost takes away from the pitch a little bit going this way, if that makes any sense. It's almost like if the tail just started up here, kind of more where this was and went up, it would take a longer time for that tail to hit the ground. But because it was more sunken in, and then in addition to being sunken in, there wasn't like in a compensation of the nose or tail. For me, it didn't have, it didn't yield a ton of pop. And the other thing with that is like on a zero deck, because it has that extra length or that extra pitch in the nose and the tail, it did have more pop. I also want to say that I skated this on Thunders, which is a wider wheelbase and also kind of like a, a shorter um, in height. So for me, if you skated this on an independent truck, you might actually get a higher pop and a higher yield because it'd be a little bit more time for the tail to hit and would give you a different angle. So let's talk about the nose and the tail shape. If you wanna really see what it looks like, you can see that in the, the setup video that I made for this deck. I kind of go into the nose and tail a little bit more, but it has a pretty, blunted nose, and then it has a little bit of a taper in the tail. Next thing I wanna talk about is the graphics of this deck. So I always do like a little review on the graphics and how they last. And these graphics lasted pretty well. Um, I, they definitely got scraped up in the nose super quick. I would say the board slide section is lasting really well, and I do quite a few board slides, so. That was cool to have that hold up. And then the tail is also, um, you know, has a little bit of scratches. I don't do too many tail slides. But I think like if you like your decks to look nice and last a little bit longer, 
this is a pretty solid deck, and I have to say, um, it is lasting me longer than some other decks that I've, I've had, just durability-wise. Which brings me to my next point, durability and pop. So, we're not talking about the yield that you get, so we're not talking about the ankle, we're just talking about the pop in the wood itself and how long that lasted. I will say, when I first got the deck, once again, I did notice it didn't give me the yield that I wanted in the pop, so I'll just leave that there, maybe come back to that later. But I do want to say that it still felt crispy, so it still felt snappy, it still felt pretty crispy, even though I wasn't getting as high off the ground as I wanted. I also just want to note that before I say anything else, when I started riding this deck or set it up, I changed a lot of elements in the deck. So I had new shoes, a new deck, new wheels, and different grip tape. So normally I skate with a Shake Junk and I use Mob with this deck. And I have to say, like, I didn't love it. It's weird. I always felt like Mob to me was way grippier than Shake Junk. But for whatever reason, in this case, this Mob grip felt definitely less grippy than the Shake Junk grip that I'm used to. So I don't know if it's a weird formula or maybe I got an older strip or something, whatever's going on. It wasn't bad. It just didn't feel as grippy as I like. And I used to Mob feeling super grippy. So that was a little weird. But the point is that I switched up a lot of things. And what I'm noting in the future is I will never switch more than two things. Because when you do that, it just gets more convoluted in trying to decipher exactly what the thing is that I like or don't like. So I am going to do a review on these sweet OJ Nomad wheels that I've been skating for a while. That's coming next. I'm switching into another pair of shoes soon. I'm going to have the Adidas Copas that I'll be doing a review on. I just wanted to be real and be honest that for me, I did switch a lot of things when I went to this deck and that could have been why I didn't love it maybe as much as some of the other decks. Getting back to the durability of the pop, it has a pretty good pop. The pop was fine, it was average, it didn't last in tremendously long, but it wasn't like as short as some of the other decks that I've had either. Like I've had decks where the, the pop dies in like two weeks. This one I got a full month and a half out of, I'd say, like until I felt like the tail was really starting to lose the pop. It's not fully razor tailed yet, I could definitely still skate this deck for sure. And I'm gonna put in some more work on it, but it does kind of have a nasty chip in the nose. So that's not super fun. I hate it when that happens, but it's still skatable. So I'm gonna skate it a little bit longer and then I'll probably get a new deck. So last thing in the durability of this deck, I would say that it's a pretty sturdy deck. I never felt like I was gonna break it. It definitely feels like it's lasting. I definitely zinged this thing into columns and walls so many times and it didn't ship. So I'm not saying that your board won't ship if you get this board you zing it into a wall, but from my experience, it does seem to have a good amount of heft and durability to it. So overall generals, pros and cons. So just to bring this video to a close, I think the biggest thing that I would want you to know getting into this deck is it was great for manuals because this part sinks in a little bit lower here. It really felt like I had a sturdy platform to manual and I did more manuals than I normally do. So that was really cool. But like the con, the biggest con of this deck is since my foot is kind of like recessed down a little bit, like it's high, but then this part's recessed. But so when I'm sliding my foot, it's going from here and it's like crossing over this like divot space going straight into the nose. And instead of like hitting the nose down here, which is where you really want the traction in my opinion, I ended up hitting the nose more like in this area and it just didn't feel super stable. Like every time I would kind of like try to level out the board or do something, my kick flips were not rocket, but they were really like all over the place. Like it was really inconsistent to get them level or like have them feel like they were all leveling out the same way. because I just wasn't used to that little space in between. It was like throwing me off a little bit. I think that if you do a lot of tech tricks, a lot of manual tricks, similar to the plan B, this could be a really great deck for you. And what I'm telling you all, my biggest con was I just couldn't get this thing off the ground high enough, as opposed to the hockey or some other decks that I've skated where I feel like I didn't have to put too much into it. I really had to move my foot back a little bit more, really had to lift the board up with my front foot to get it over an obstacle and ollie. I didn't love that, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be honest. Other than that though, I think it's a really solid shape. No slides, tail slides, board slides, all that good stuff. You should be good to go. Would I buy a Polar Deck again? I don't think I would. I think just like the shape of what this thing does here just threw me off a little bit too much to where I would move on to another deck uh, shape or another deck size or something like that. Maybe try something different from the family. I do really love their graphics though. I think Polar has some of the sickest graphics on the market. That's part of one of the reasons why I bought the deck to begin with. I will always be interested and keep an eye on what they're doing, but I, I don't know if they make different shapes. I would definitely be interested in trying a different shape because the Papa's lasted a reasonable amount of time. 
but I'll leave my thoughts there. If you guys have any questions, please leave those in the comments and I'll get back to you. Any thoughts that you have also, I'd love to know. So feel free to like, subscribe, and comment if you did like this video. I appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time. Take care. Bye.